Welcome to this class. This class has been recorded for my students who are unable to attend their regular class because of the coronavirus pandemic. But of course, everyone is welcome to join in. So I'm going to focus on two things. One is respiratory resilience, because this is a respiratory disease. And secondly, I'm going to focus on yoga practices that help to support a strong immune system, just to give you the best chance of, of staying well. So we're going to begin with a breathing practice. And you can sit comfortably. I'm sitting on a yoga block and a blanket. You may need more than one block or you could sit in a chair. So just be comfortable, feel that the spine is upright. Rest the hands on the knees, can be palms down or palms up, and close the eyes or take the eyes downcast. And take a moment to notice exactly how you feel right now. You may be feeling a little more stressed than usual because we are living in unusual times. And you may be trying to do your yoga practice in a busy household. So if you are, just try to work with what you have and don't be too annoyed or distracted by the sounds around you. Just gently bring your attention and your awareness back to your breath and back to your body. And take a moment to really notice exactly how you feel in your body right now whether you are well, energized, or feeling unwell and tired. Is your mind alert or a little dull? We bring no judgment to this. We're just noticing exactly how we feel because this is where we're starting our practice from. And then begin to focus on your breath by breathing in and out through the nose. And over the course of the next few breaths, begin to deepen and slow the inhale and the exhale. It's really important during this coronavirus outbreak that you remember to breathe in through the nose. The nose really is the first line of defense for the body for airborne bacteria, viruses, and pollutants. As you breathe in, the air is spun and viruses and bacteria will stick to the mucus lining of your nose and be destroyed by the immune system. Although you have a second similar system within the lungs and the windpipe, if you breathe in through the mouth, you bypass this first system, this first line of defense, and you will make it more likely that you could catch um, any of the bacteria or viruses that are around, including coronavirus. So breathing in and out through the nose. And what we'll do now is silently count the in-breath. And over the course of the next couple of breaths, thinking about extending the count until you reach a comfortable maximum for your inhalation, you're not straining the breath. And to reach that comfortable maximum, you may find that it helps to visualize the lungs in three sections. The base of the lungs where the ribs move outwards, the lower ribs as you begin to breathe in. The mid chest where the ribs lift and widen as you get to the mid part of the breath and the collarbones at the top, which may lift slightly as you reach the fullness of your inhalation. And as you exhale, everything is in reverse and there's no effort on exhale. You'll feel the collarbones releasing down, the ribs releasing in, the lower ribs moving back in. Just work with your breath, finding that fullness of breath. Noticing and filling each section, base, middle and top as you breathe in. 
and allowing a long, smooth, slow exhale. The second breathing practice we're going to do now is the long exhale. And when you do a long exhale, it stimulates that side of the nervous system, which is responsible for the relaxation response and for bringing the nervous system into balance, removing stress hormones and enabling your immune system to function at its optimum capacity. Now the exhale tends to be a little bit longer than the inhale in any case, because you simply relax your breathing muscles. The effort is all on the inhale. And as you relax your breathing muscles and the elasticity of the lungs means that the exhale largely happens on its own, but we can control the length of the exhale. So what we'll be doing, I can show you with the breathing ball is a nice full inhale, just like the ones we've been doing and then a longer, slower exhale, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. So if you are breathing in, say, for a count of five, you might find yourself breathing out for a count of six or seven or eight. But really what we want after we've done a few of these long exhales is simply the feeling of length of the out breath being as full as it can be as long as it can be, and as relaxing as it can be. So if you haven't already closed your eyes, close your eyes now, and continue with that full inhale in through the nose, and long exhale. Inhaling through the nose, and exhaling through the nose. We're going to begin this section on the floor by lying with the knees bent and the feet flat on the floor. And most people need some kind of support under the back of the head so that your forehead is level with or slightly higher than your chin. You don't want to be in this position with the back of the neck scrunched up. And once you're here, just rest both palms on the tummy the lower back should be feeling quite flat against the floor in this position, but we're just going to emphasize that. We're going to breathe in, breathing into the chest, and as we breathe out, we're going to draw the tummy muscles in and feel the lower back flattening and pressing down to the floor. Breathing in, let the tummy soften, and breathing out, draw the tummy muscles in. And one more time, nice smooth inhale and a long exhale. And that long exhale is supported by this drawing in and engagement of our core muscles. And then we're gonna add in an arm movement. We're gonna breathe in and take both arms overhead. You don't need to stretch. It's more about releasing the shoulders. And if the back of the hands don't reach the mat behind you, it doesn't matter. This is your inhale position. And as you inhale, you will get a little bit of arching in the lower back, but we're also looking for an opening in the chest. So inhale, and then a long exhale, bringing the hands back onto the tummy and drawing the tummy in. Inhale. Let the shoulders feel soft. And exhale engage through your core. 
And you might want to do this with the eyes closed once you've got this movement. And when you close the eyes, you can really sense what is happening in your body. So you may notice that as you completely exhale and draw in your deep abdominal muscles, you'll also feel the pelvic floor engaging and lifting. So we're working on our deep postural muscles. And then on the next inhale, let both knees come in, either hold the shins or the back of the thigh and take a little rock from side to side. And as you roll the knees from side to side, begin to roll the head the opposite way so that we're mobilizing the spine and the neck. Come back to center, have one hand on each knee, take a breath in. And as you exhale, bend the elbows and draw the thighs in. Inhale, let the arms lengthen away, make space for the breath, and a long, smooth exhale, draw the thighs in. And this posture helps to stretch out the lower back and also give a little bit of space to your sacroiliac joint. And then release the hands down, palms down, and just do a couple of circles keeping the lower back flat on the floor and using a few more of your more superficial core muscles to control this movement of the legs and then around in the other direction. And then we want to open the hips. So we're going to circle the knees wide apart, bring the arms together, Try and do an inhale for one half of the circle and an exhale for the second half. That will keep the movement really slow and enable you to receive feedback from your body about whether your, your hip joints are stiff or open or a mixture. And then we'll add in a couple of circles in the opposite direction. And then we'll come back to center and take the feet down. On your next inhale, you're gonna bend the right knee in over the chest and take the left arm overhead. And still inhaling, stretch the leg up to take our first stretch of these hamstring muscles at the back of the right thigh. And exhaling, bring the leg and the arm back down. And doing opposite arm and leg just a useful way of integrating the left and right hemispheres of the brain, good for coordination and concentration. Just once more, opposite arm and leg. For our next stretch, we'll need a yoga belt, but if you don't have one, just an ordinary belt would be fine, or an old tie or the cord of a dressing gown. And take whatever you're using around the right foot and then wrap the cord or belt around the hands once so that you're not gripping with the hands too tightly. And take the leg up towards the ceiling, but keep a slight bend in the knee so you're not doing a, mass, a maximum stretch here. And then as you breathe in, slightly soften the knee and as you breathe out, stretch and straighten the right leg. Breathing in and then using your long exhale to invite length and space into the back of your leg. Many people have tightness in these hamstring muscles at the back of the thigh. Due to our lifestyle of sitting in chairs too much of the time. So you need to do consistent and regular stretching of these muscles to really give them the extra length that you need. And when you've done about five of these dynamic stretches, we're going to hold the stretch. And if you are one of the more flexible people doing this class, you can let this leg come drawing in a little bit 
in order to deepen the stretch. And we're taking five breaths here, but really expecting the stretch to deepen only during the long exhale. That's the relaxation part of our breath. And at the end of your fifth breath, let the knee bend, bring the other foot up to take over the belt. Take the right foot down, inhale, bending the left knee and exhale, extending into the stretch with a long, slow exhalation. the end of the fifth exhale coming into the static stretch and using the long exhale to deepen the stretch and drawing the leg in a little bit more but only if it's appropriate if you feel that your breath is being interrupted or the muscle starts to shake that's a, a sign of overdoing the stretch so stay within a reasonable amount of stretch where you can feel the work of the stretch but your breath is leading what is happening in your body. One more breath here, keeping the shoulders nice and firmly grounded on the mat as you do these stretches so you're not hunching or, or lifting up towards the foot. And then at the end of the next exhale, releasing the foot down and releasing the belt. And just pause for a moment with the eyes closed. And draw the knees in, take a little rock from side to side. into a spinal twist. We'll have the knees bent, the lower back flat on the floor, extend both arms away from you and if you're a bit tight for space just bend the elbows like this. And as you exhale you're going to take the knees over to the right and roll the head to the left. And as you breathe in bring the head and knees back to centre and as you exhale Use your long exhale to release into the twist. The breath is leading the movement. The body is following the breath. If you want a little more twist, bringing the feet together and exhaling moving from the outer edge of the foot into the twist as you breathe out. As long as you're keeping both shoulders on the mat, that's the important thing. knees in and counterpose the twisting movements with a little bit of rocking from side to side. And our last practice from this semi-supine position is a gentle back bend called Dvipadapitham in Sanskrit. And for this we want to take anything away from the back of the head, extend the neck away. We're going to be lifting the hips and the feet and the shoulders will be the foundation for this movement. As you exhale, 
exhale, draw the tummy in so the lower back is flat on the floor. And then as you inhale, just lift the pelvis a small distance away from the mat. And then as you exhale, tuck the tail and roll the pelvis down. Inhale on the mat, exhale, engage through the pelvic floor and the abdominals to press the lower back nice and flat. Inhale, coming up just a little bit higher and exhale, rolling down the spine. And just work with that three more times. Taking your inhale and exhale to engage foundation for your starting position and using an inhale to come up as high as is appropriate for you and exhale rolling down the spine keeping the spine as mobile as possible Still using the long exhale to deepen our experience of the poses. And at the end of the last roll down, bring the knees in once more and take a little rock from side to side. And then come up to sitting in any way that works for you. And we're going to pad our knees now. So most of you will be doing this practice from home. So just grab a cushion or a pillow. I'm going to use a blanket and I'm going to place the hands a little way in front of the shoulders. That's to decrease the angle on the wrist joint. But once I've got the hands down, I'm really going to spread the fingers and try and use the whole of the hand to support the weight. That's to take the stress off the wrists. As I tuck the chin in and look back, the thighs are hip width apart. If you tend to get cramp in your feet, which some students do, you can do this practice of cats with the toes tucked under. Otherwise, just rest on the top of the feet. And as you breathe in, we're gonna do hardly anything with the head, but we're gonna tilt the pelvis and feel as if we're drawing the upper back deep into the body between the shoulder blades. And as you exhale, you're gonna push through the hands and the shins to arch up, tuck the chin in, tuck the tailbone under, and pull in the tummy muscles to arch up and create space between all your vertebra. The cat posture is a wonderful way to mobilize the spine. It moves more than 70 joints. And what you want to feel is that the whole of your spine is involved in this movement and not just the lower back and not just the neck, which would be the feeling if we let the head do too much. So the mid part of the back, the thoracic spine, which is half of the spine, that's the area that curves outwards that is a little bit stiffer because each of the vertebrae there are attached to a rib. So it's the middle part of the back where we really want to focus our attention and find as much movement as possible. Still using that long exhale to deepen our practice. And then the next time you inhale, take the knees just a tiny bit wider, bring the big toes together and slide the hips back towards the heels. And you may need another blanket here if you have any knee or hip problems and you can rest the forehead on the back of the hands or rest the forehead down on the mat. going to do a downward facing dog but for some of you with high blood pressure or wrist or shoulder problems that's not going to be appropriate so what you're going to do as an alternative is inhale tucking the toes under and then exhale sliding the hips 
down towards the heels, sliding the hands away from the shoulders, bringing the forehead down towards the mat, breathing in, coming back up, and breathing out, extending into this position. So you'll still get a lot of the spinal lengthening quality of Downward Dog and also the extension through the shoulders. If you're able to do the full posture, it's going to be breathe in, tuck the toes and breathing out, take the head down and the hips up. Keep the knees bent. This posture is not primarily to stretch the hamstrings in this class. It's to engage through the tummy muscles and lengthen the spine. So you're lifting your sit bones as high as you can and extending down through the crown of the head to the floor. Breathing in, take the knees down and breathing out, slide the hands away and the head down. Breathing in, coming up, tuck the toes. Breathing out, downward dog. Breathing in, coming down, untuck the feet, breathing out, slide down. Allow this practice to become breath led and use your long exhale to really lengthen the spine, lift the sit bones high in the downward dog or the extended child's pose, whichever you are doing. And we'll do one more round. And then bring the arms back, palms facing upwards for a final resting position. The next pose we're going to do is a lunge. The knee padding is even more important because we'll be taking all the weight through one knee. So do increase the padding if you need to and don't feel any discomfort in your knees. So we're gonna come up and step the right leg forwards and then we're gonna move into an appropriate lunge for you. Notice there's an angle here between the knee and the thigh. So there's a stretch through the front of the thigh and through the front of the hips. And the two hands resting lightly on the leading leg, just draw the spine upright and create what is quite a significant amount of back bend, but focused on lengthening these structures through the thigh, the groin and the pelvis. We're going to keep the knee over the ankle or just this side of it to avoid strain on the back of the knee. And take a few breaths here. This is quite a deep stretch and it takes a few breaths to really settle into it. But again, we're going to use the long exhale to release as much as we can as we breathe out. This pose is particularly effective at counteracting the negative effects for the body of sitting too long in a chair. So um, if you're stuck at home and you are spending a lot of time in a chair, then this is a practice that you really need. So round about now, we're going to take that right leg back and just take a little resting pose. and come into the same position on the left side, stepping the left leg forward. And again, just finding the right amount of lunge for you where you're feeling the work in the body 
but you're not overdoing it. Your breath is steady and you're using your long exhale to release a little more deeply into the lunge. And at the end of the next exhale, bringing that left leg back. And again, just taking a few breaths to relax. Our final position is a simple inversion. What we're going to do is either have the legs in the air on one or two blocks or if you're close to a wall then place one or two blocks under the pelvis and rest the legs at the wall and rest the arms beside the body. And allow yourself to continue to take nice steady breath breathing in and out through the nose and this time using the long exhale to simply settle and release into this mild inversion this is a quietening pose that is preparing us for our relaxation going to take relaxation. If you have any problems with your lower back or discomfort then I suggest you take your relaxation with the knees bent, rest the knees together, have the feet a little bit wider than hip width apart so the legs can relax and the lower back is nice and flat on the mat. If you're able to come into the full straight leg position then come into that. Take a moment to Notice how you feel in this position. And we're going to use the same long exhale in this relaxation. So as you breathe in, you're going to tense and lift the right leg. And then you're going to use your long exhale to relax the right leg. And breathing in, extend, lift, tense the left leg, long exhale relax. Engage the muscles around the pelvis, squeeze and lift the pelvis and exhale, relax. Breathe into a nice soft abdomen and exhale, draw the tummy muscles back down towards the spine with a long exhale and inhale, relax. Inhale, stretch the arm away, palm facing up, stretch the fingers, tense the muscles of the right arm and long exhale, relax the shoulder, the upper arm, the elbow, the forearm and the wrist. Breathing in, lift the left arm, extend, contract, tense and exhale, release the shoulder, upper arm, elbow, forearm and rest. And next inhale, slightly tuck the chin in, lengthen the back of the neck and long exhale, relax. Breathing in, squeeze and furrow the brow, squeeze the eyes, wriggle the jaw and exhale, relax. Breathing in and as you breathe out, slowly turn the head to the right. Exhale, 
Breathing in, come back to center. And breathing out, roll the head to the left. Breathing in, back to center. And now take five more breaths. Breathing in freely and fully. And using a long exhale to feel the whole of your body relax. Sensation of heaviness in the whole of your body. And feel as if you're relaxing your body down onto the mat, down onto the floor, to the ground, to the earth, with every long exhale that you take. the end of your next exhale just move the fingers and the toes and stretch your body in any way that feels good and when you're ready bend the knees roll onto your left side and just take a moment a breath or two until you're ready to use the hands and mindfully come back up to sitting we're going to finish our class with the practice of alternate nostril breathing which again supports the long exhale and the enhanced support for the immune system. If you're happy to close your eyes, close your eyes. In a moment, you'll be using your two index fingers to alternately close the right nostril and the left nostril. If you find that either nostril is blocked, you're gonna take in additional breath through the mouth as you need to. So sit up nice and tall, let your breath settle into a nice steady flowing rhythm and at the end of the next in-breath bring the left index finger up and gently rest it on the left nostril to close or partially close it and fully exhale through the right Ready to breathe in, release the left hand and inhale through both. And when you're ready to breathe out, bring the right index finger up and exhale through the left. Continue this practice using your breath. Inhaling through both nostrils and exhaling through alternate nostrils. And the next time you exhale through the left nostril, make that your last one. Keep the eyes closed. 
return your breathing to its natural rhythm and take a moment to notice how you feel in your body, your breath, your mind. And when you're ready, blinking open your eyes. Thank you very much for joining me for this class. I wish you peace, happiness and health. Namaste.